Hey everybody, excited you could join us today. And I am also excited about the guest I have, uh, Lisa Crump. Hi, Lisa. Thanks for joining me. <laughs> Good morning. Lisa. Good morning, Jen. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And Lisa is, is at Lisa founded Liberty Prayer Caucus, and she's also co-founder of the life group, The Bomb of Gilead. So mm -hmm. I am just so happy to have you here and uh, looking forward to what God uh, has uh, put on your heart to share with us today. Lisa, what has God given you to do in this season and how is faith helping you do it? Wow. I love that question, Janet. Um, I um worked in ministry full-time for about 26 years, some part-time stuff before that, but it was able to retire a little over about four years ago, not quite four years ago. And I loved being in ministry. Um, part of um, what burdened me at the time, you know, towards the end of that season is that my life really never seemed to, to touch the lost, you know, because I was working with already committed believers and stuff. And that I worked uh, nationally a lot in the United States. I've been in every state in America and I'm so thankful to get to do that. I felt like I had the best jobs in the world in ministry, but then I, wow, I felt that there amazing. was, yeah. there was a, just that I wasn't um, impacting locally. And I was seeing my mm -hmm. own state and our area changed dramatically in the 33 years that we've lived in in Colorado and I I had a growing burden for the lost and being able to to work locally. So mm -hmm. God has really opened some doors that way. I think that um, it's been a, a real transition and yet I'm very excited that he's given me that chance. So Liberty Prayer Caucus um, was really a, a friend of mine who I'd worked with. He had been a volunteer in the prayer ministry where I worked for years and his wife uh, and him were involved in government and also in ministry to, um, to the youth because he kind of grew up on the streets actually in North Carolina where you are too. So that might be a good, great guess for you sometime. But he asked if I would start Liberty Prayer Caucus and call it that. And the name just resonated so much because mm -hmm. I love Isaiah 61, where it talks about liberty for the captives. And um, mm -hmm. that, you know, that's really kind of our, once we have become a Christian and, and really grown in our faith, we want to help other people find that liberty. And so mm -hmm. anyway, it, it's founded somewhat around government for our state that um, we've gotten more liberal as time has gone on and just, just praying for a lot of really godly people running for office and just some of the concepts that we're all seeing, you know, from the school system. And we have a huge military presence here in my city in Colorado Springs, Colorado, and some of those concepts that just need concerted prayer. And um, the government tends to impact a lot of things that we're all doing. And so we spend a lot of time in, in prayer. We pray weekly on Thursday mornings and it's, um, you know, it's um, a lot of people have come and gone in three and a half years that have been a part of it. Some have stayed. And so God brings new people, different seasons of their lives. And then mm. he, you know, takes people on to start something else that they're a part of. So it's been a really exciting time to pray for some people really on the, I would say, the tip of the spear in our region that are trying to impact for godly values here in um our, you know, our county and our state. And then, of course, that impacts the nation. So, yeah, we see ourselves as a, a high place because we live in a high elevation compared to a lot of places. And so we, we want us to be that city, that county that is the light on a hill, you know, that can't be hidden. And so we really pray concertedly for that. We pray scripture a lot. I love when uh, groups of us pray scripture, sometimes we pray Korean style prayer where everybody prays at once on the same subject because God can hear us all at the same time. And it's just been a real honor to do that. Through that too, I've been asked to be the chaplain of our 
one of our, our government groups here in town. And that's been good to be able to go to some of those meetings and always open the, the meeting when I'm able to be there in prayer and just ask that it's, um, you know, a really respectful and honorable inviting the Holy Spirit to lead the meeting, to bring peaceful, godly solutions to the things that they're discussing. So also another way just locally that it's just God that opens doors. I mean, it's just, he's incredible. And uh, somehow through it, when I was still working, I was connected with a pastor locally here that just had a real heart for prayer. And that's kind of been my my journey is, is, is prayer and the word of God. And so um, he had asked, he'd been helping with our, our county commissioners, our board of county commissioners, they have in their bylaws to open their meetings with prayer. And so getting people, godly people to do that had been mm -hmm. kind of a, a hard thing to do, you know? And so he asked me to help him with that. And, and I've been doing that about three years too, helping recruit uh, Christians to pray at the meeting. And so mm -hmm. um, it's a privilege to get to go and do that myself. Sometimes I learn things that, you know, I didn't know were going on locally, but it sure does give you a, a pulse of that. And mm -hmm. the reason that I got really charged up about that, um, that pastor had to step away. He retired from his church and now he's traveling a lot in the world because he, he has such a heart for prayer. But, um, one of the meetings they had had um, a sa Satanist come and pray. And, you know, I know it's hard for them to, to keep it where it's, you know, open for every kind of faith, but we were really able to boost our recruitment when we shared that with the Christians that we really want to pray, you know, to the only God that there is, <laughs> there's only one. And so people really rallied around that and wanted to bring, those meetings into the presence of God. So that's been a, a fun thing to do too. Yeah. So that's the board of County commissioners and Liberty prayer caucus. And mm. I that, still that, do. That's so, amazing. amazing. <laughs> well, it's God. I mean, it totally is God. Cause I was asked to do both of those things and they both were local and it, it's really blessed me a lot to do that. Mm -hmm. So I just really am a kind of a um, recruiter in a way and a, a facilitator of Liberty Prayer. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I love it that because then it's the Holy Spirit leading and you're just inviting people. Absolutely. To have the same calling or anointing for that mm -hmm. area mm -hmm. of prayer. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I've also stayed a little bit involved in national prayer through uh, Transform USA, which was uh, founded by. Um, I was going to ask you later about that. Yes. Yeah. 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 Tell us about that. <laughs> that was founded by a, a brother, a Korean brother who lived here in Colorado Springs, and he's gone on to be with the Lord now. But um, he asked another mutual Korean friend, brother, to uh, take the leadership of that. And then he asked if I would kind of help, um, help co host. And so there's four of us that co-host Transform USA, and it was weekly for during COVID and stuff. Um, it was uh, weekly, and now we've moved back to the original format, which is monthly. And so we're doing that on the first Wednesday of the month, and it's about a 90-minute call on various topics, kind of what the main thing is that's going on in our nation that needs prayer. So it's been fun to keep a local pulse. I mean, I'm sorry, a national pulse going as well as the local stuff, you know. But, yeah. yeah. At my church, we changed churches um, kind of with our retirement too. To a, it's called Church for All Nations, which I love that title. I mean, mm -hmm. isn't that a fabulous name for a church? Yeah. Yes. And, um, they Absolutely. are um, very multicultural and one of my friends that I had worked with in ministry before was on staff there. And when I retired, she just said, um, would you be interested in starting a, a grandmother's group? Cause we'd had a mutual friend who put out this monthly mailer on praying grandmothers and with lots of verses mm -hmm. and praying for our grandchildren. I love that. Oh, I think every church <laughs> should have one, you oh, know, every community. Yes. 
should have a group of praying grandmothers because mm -hmm. I had one. I lived across the dirt road in the mm -hmm. small town where I grew up in Texas and my grandparents lived across the dirt road from us and she was <laughs> a praying grandmother and I want to be like her because she mm -hmm. impacted my life so mm -hmm. very much. And so I, I was able to help start that and launch that, but I, I knew that God would you know, some other people would be able to carry it on longer than me. But it was so fun to be part of that launch and to see how God has grown it and how so many. At one point, we tallied up how many grandchildren were being prayed for. And it was like 125 in just our group of, of 20 people. It was just incredible, you know, because some had great grandchildren. Yeah. By so that's something I'm just a member of now, not leading, but it's it's been fun to be a part of things I could never have done before in full time ministry and which I travel yeah. for. Yeah. Well, can you tell us a little bit about the life group? Yeah. Um, yes. Yes. Well, it's it's an interesting story. Um, you know, I began as kind of being able to be involved locally more. I learned there's so many people that have wounds and a lot of wounds from the church. And one thing that our pastor says a lot is church hurts are the worst hurts. And mm -hmm. I found that to be really yeah. true. And I experienced mm -hmm. a few of them, my own in that 26 years or so, who, who doesn't, you know, were people, but, and I probably, you know, wounded some people myself along the way and not intentional, but um, I was able to connect with a friend that had worked, you know, here in Colorado Springs, there's so many Christian ministries and you make some good friends along the way. And one of those ladies, um, we got to visiting more and she led a group called uh, for intensive prayer for where there was kind of because she worked with a lot of the ministries that where people was just kind of deeply, you know, hurt. I know our churches as well. And so we got to visiting and we meet regularly now, but it was in, um, I think it was two summers ago. Um, I, I was in church and worship and we had a, a visitor who I've known for years and years in ministry. And um, she was here staying with us and I just was crying and weeping. And I knew once I retired that there would be something about this balm of Gilead that God would have me do, but it wasn't time yet. And um, so that was two summers, right this month, it was two two years ago. So this friend was there, the two friends were around me. And I just said, we're supposed to start, there's supposed to be a group called the Balm of Gilead. And you know, it's a verse in Jeremiah eight. And I knew there was a hymn named that as well. Mm -hmm. I didn't know a lot about it, but I knew it had to do with, with healing uh, physically but also felt like the Lord wanted to use that concept of when there's been maybe spiritual abuse or spiritual hurts or mm -hmm. offenses, you know, and he doesn't ever want us to live that way. Yeah. And so um, my friend and I begin the, to develop, you know, this concept of maybe we should do that together. Cause I knew that I knew I wouldn't do it alone. I needed, yeah. um, someone else, you know, to co-labor with you, two or more together. Right. And so January of um, this year, I, I met with her and I was really prayed up about it. And I just said, now I need you to pray about this. And I told her, you know, I'd really be interested in with you starting a group, you know, they're called life groups at our church and um, they go on for weeks or or years, you know, yeah. depending on how long it sure. is needed. But I had talked with the church as well about the concept. Do you think this is something that would be useful here in light of all the other? Because they have so many much good programming at our mm -hmm. church that's, yeah. you know, maybe not being duplicated type of thing. And they thought it would. And so anyway, back in January, I asked my friend, would you be interested in doing that with me? But I want you to pray about it. You know, and it was like the two second prayer. And she said, yes. She said, the oh. Lord has already told me that I would be doing new ministry outside of her own church. We're in two different churches. Wow. And so I just think that the Lord has been birthing it for a while, um, probably better about three years. But he began to be specific. You know how he is. Yes. You know, the term yes. of Gilead. <laughs> 
you, and, you uh, know when it's time. <laughs> you know when it's time. And so it's, you know, we've been doing a lot of reading and study and pulling several resources and a bibliography of what we mm -hmm. have learned um, from Jezebel mm -hmm. Spirit to um, other books that have just yeah. concepts that we Ooh. just hope to really bring people through, um, yeah. you know, where they don't live with that level of um, mm -hmm. angst or any of those things that are just not where God wants us to live. Yeah. In fact, yeah. I was I was writing a, a card this morning to a friend of mine who, um, you know, has we've walked through a lot of these storms. We've been in ministry, we're in ministry twenty years together. About how much we, you know, she had helped me through it, and I I've invited her to yeah. come out and be one of our guest speakers for this because her hurts really started as a child. And then I told her, now you have to do a part two because there's different ones as you get older. And she and I yeah. are both in our 60s and and there's different, you know, it might be family hurts. It may be mm -hmm. something from your childhood that's still there. Yeah. It may be, yeah. you know, um, you know, feeling betrayed by someone. Mm -hmm. So there's there's just so many ways that it can manifest. And um, right. I'm just learning that just, you know, I, that everyone had carry something. So yeah, there's absolutely. Just, so absolutely. we're going to have all a, a teaching, but then we're going to end with prayer so that there's really more one-on-one -on -one prayer for the mm. feeling that what God wants to do each mm. week, lots of, yes. you know, journaling through it. So yeah. we'll see what God does. It's, it's a new thing for us, but we're, That's right. I feel earlier in the year. Then. <laughs> I felt like I was like kind of wanting to delay, like, Lord, I'm not ready to do this yet. And you know how uh, sometimes you can just feel that prompting from the Lord that yeah. not, mm -hmm. not always, you know, audible, but it was don't delay, don't right. delay, don't wait. Right. And right. Um, my well, God has certainly given you a, a, a lot to do, actually. I don't uh, know. You and your friend, too. Uh, so yeah. I, that is just wonderful. And certainly you have given some some great uh, thoughts and ideas for other churches uh, to try mm -hmm. as well. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think the grandmother group, you know, engaging that older generation. Yeah. Our pastor Absolutely. always says that that's the most productive time of our life because right. you've, learned, you've learned a lot. And that's right. And we want to impart that, leave a legacy. Absolutely. Yes, definitely. Definitely. If anyone would like to uh, contact Lisa, Lisa Crump, this is her email, yeah, Lisa Crump 1972 at gmail.com. Thank you, Lisa so much Thank for you. being my guest today and sharing so many good things. Uh, what a good word today. Thank you. <laughs> well, we thank God. We thank God. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and I want to thank you all for watching and also give a thank you to those watching on Abundant TV Network. Have faith and look up, friends, where our help comes from. Bye. God bless. <laughs>